Here at Artisan Cakes, we're so excited about Karen's new book, Elegant Pie. In fact, we decided to put her basic pie dough to the test, and the results were phenomenal. We decided to use the food processor method from her book. Um, we had great, great results. It was flaky, delicious, and easy to work with. For recipes and inspiration, visit our website at artisancakes.com and purchase a copy for yourself. Elegant Pie by Karen Five Boschek. So there's my egg, my cold water. I also have my vinegar and my cream of tartar. And then here I have the dry goods. There's my butter. It was very soft when I measured it, so it was super squishy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take my food processor. You can use any style of food processor. I love my Ninja, I use it for everything. And we're gonna place all of the dry ingredients into that container. That's enough for two nine inch pie crusts. That's our goal, two nine inch pie crusts. And then we will put a little lid on. All right, a couple of pulses, just to incorporate all of the dry ingredients. That way we don't end up with chunks of salt here and chunks of sugar over here. And then I go ahead and measure out all of my wet ingredients, which is the water. I've already pre-measured it. I did find, like in, a, in the recipe, it says, you know, every flower is different. You may have to add a little more water or use a little less. I had to add water. So initially I tried just the, I think it's 80 milliliters. And I ended up increasing that to 100 milliliters for my particular bulk brand of all purpose flour. Every flower will be different. So I would start with 80. You might have to bring it up to 100. I also, I kind of skipped some of the details there. It talks about adding the cream of tartar later. I just, I threw it in the water quarter teaspoon, not too much. You can taste this um, if it's too much. And then I just gave it a good swirl, dissolved. And then I went ahead and added my drops of vinegar. And I just used a one ounce eyedropper that's about half full. And then just squirted that in. Then I beat up the egg, <laughs> beat it up. <laughs> whole egg. Whole egg. There were no specific measurements and her recipe calls for a medium. Um, I went ahead with just the normal grade A large and it worked great. So there is our egg. And then we give this a quick stir. Set that aside. Then the butter, this portion is a little important. We're gonna cut this up into small pieces, small chunks. So just find a nice place to start and just begin by chopping up your butter. I'm totally turning this into crust later. I'm, I'm so excited. I haven't decided what kind of pie I want to make yet. Also, Karen's blog has recipe after recipe after recipe for just the pie. So it's not just about the pie crust. She experiments with tons of different pie flavors. Now that we have pulsed that, all of your butter goes in at one time. If you don't do it all at once, you will overwork it. Okay. So the goal is to get everything done as quickly as possible. Put our lid back on. Now we're going to pulse. Was that 10? Did I hit 10? 11? Whoa. 10, 11 times. And we're looking for butter chunks that are about that size. I do have a couple that are a little bit large, so I'm gonna just do it two more times and see if I can get it back down to a pea size. Now you notice we haven't added any water yet. We do that on purpose. As soon as we hydrate flour, it begins producing gluten. You produce gluten by hydrating the flour and working the flour. So we mix all of this stuff up together, then we add our water when we're like ready to do the very final steps. 
So you make sure all of your butter is the right size, make sure you have all your spices in there, any coloring, right before you add your liquid. All right, the liquid is pretty easy. We've got that kind of blended up here. And I'm just going to turn on the processor and try to pour this through as quickly as possible. When it pulls away and it really comes together, I stop. This looks like it might still be a little bit dry, but it's hard to tell until you pull the pieces apart and really get in here and start feeling it. So I do have a lot of dry crumb. So I could add a little bit more water, but I have a large chunk of water over here too. So what I'm going to do instead is dump this out onto my surface and see if I can kind of combine the wet and the dry together without adding a lot more water. Most of my water actually is hanging out right in there. See all that? Mm -hmm. So there's where all my water is. I'm gonna work this in together. Just by gently picking it up and combining it together. If it were too dry, I would use that little spritz bottle there and like separate out the wet chunks and spritz gently the um, uh, dry, like the dry dusty stuff and kind of work it until it started coming together. But I don't want to overwork it. The more you work it, the more you need it, the tougher it gets, which makes it easier for artwork. But our goal was to find something in the middle. So I'll just kind of break this open find the spots that are a little more wet and see if I can just work those little pieces in without necessarily kneading it together. And then once you have most of that dry worked in, I stop. I stop messing with it. And you're going to separate out the two parts into about equal amounts. And I can probably roll this over here and then just create like a little ball and you can flatten it out slightly if you want to. And then you wrap it in saran wrap or in a Ziploc and you refrigerate it and let it rest. It behaves so much better after a rest. Um, their recommendation is at least an hour. But what does it say, up to, up to 13 hours, like overnight? It's 18. 18 hours. Mm We're gonna go ahead and unwrap our dough and place it onto the work surface. And you should probably, you'll be able to see those little specks of butter hanging out. Like you'll see them. It's kind of cool. But they should be no larger than pea size. If you have little crumbles, just kind of press it into it. Just press it on top. Because this dough is cold, our first kneading is going to be a little bit of a chore. I can't do it sitting down. I always have to stand up and I get it as close to me as I can. But I'm going to place my rolling pin right in the middle of it and press down and kind of wiggle a little and roll toward me and then roll away from me. I am not trying to press this guy super flat immediately. I just, I'm trying to get a nice little even surface top. If you start to come apart like flakes, put a very, very tiny amount of flour on the top and just kind of brush across it to dry that surface. And if you've got flakes, that means your pie dough is going to be super delicious. Mine didn't do it. I totally anticipated it doing it. But if it starts coming off on your rolling pin, just peel it off and apply it back to your mass. We are going to go the opposite direction with a gentle push and then back in the middle and go the other direction, gentle push. These are very gentle pushes. And you'll notice every time I lift my rolling pin, I am cleaning it off. I am pulling off the debris. If you find yourself really uneven on one side or the other, focus on the fat side and press it down for this next roll. So now I have a desire to kind of come over here and press diagonally, both directions, diagonally, both directions. We need to release it from our 
silicone. So to do that, we're going to place our hand right here. Move everything off of your silicone mat. We're going to bring our silicone mat up, lay the dough over our wrist, and pull the silicone mat away from it. And then while you're doing that, grab some flour and toss it back here on the mat. So now it should release it enough that we can go for this again. So exactly the same process. In the middle, I'm gently putting pressure, not a lot of pressure, toward me. Back in the middle, gently putting pressure away from me. So now I have quite a nice little log going on, but I'm short my two sides. Same thing. Middle, gentle pressure to the right. Middle, gentle pressure to the left. Now I can tell my dough is starting to stick to my silicone mat again. So it's time for me to raise this up and throw just a little more flour back there. A liberal sprinkling is what I would call it. And you can flip your arm the other direction and do exactly the same thing. If you're ambidextrous like me. <laughs> and don't forget to apply a little bit of flour on the top if you feel like it's starting to stick to your rolling pin. Too big? No worries. You're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Too big, you're great. If it goes out a little bit, no big deal. Just as long as you can kind of get the whole board on that circle. I think we should actually probably trim you guys want to trim off the extra so you can see that pretty circle and know exactly where to work? And your scraps, just gently lay them off to the side, but don't knead them. Don't squish them together. Just set them off to the side. You might find them useful for later. <laughs> <laughs> 